It is Wednesday, my dudes, which means it's time for another first thoughts and initial impressions epic seven video. This one will be on C Phantom Politis, the newest Moonlight five star that was just shown this morning earlier over on YouTube. As with all of my impressions, I'll give you my two cents on the character. Do I think she's any good? Where would I play her? What kinds of equipment sets and artifacts? All the stuff you've come to expect from me in an impressions video. So I really want to talk about this character. Let's not waste any time and get right into her S3 animation. Would you care to share a dance with me? We can waltz until the black oceans dry up and the sea salt becomes like stars. Life is full of suffering. Let this be your paradise. Shall we dance? Holy hell, the art department just continues to impress. This character is absolutely gorgeous, in my opinion. Before we talk about the character stats, let's talk about her English voiceover artist, who is Reba Burr. You may remember me mentioning her in How to Play Politis in the past, and also How to Play Senya, because she's every version of Senya in the English dub, and I say every version because there's the base one, and then we'll be getting two more at some point this year she is also the voice of wolbach from the english dub of konosuba if you happen to watch its various spin-offs moving on to see phantom politics's stat she is a dark ranger of the pisces zodiac symbol which is honestly probably the best non-dps ranger stat line in the game because it's the one that lua has as well as biblis taking a look at it it has 993 attack 611 defense 6002 health 120 base speed, 15% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, and no starting effectiveness or effect resistance. Imprint for the team is attack percentage, and the self-imprint is health percentage. Honestly, the only drawback to the stat line is the effectiveness. 0% is not ideal, but you get a really tanky body, especially for a ranger, and one of the higher base speeds in all of Epic 7. Honestly, if the character had effectiveness percentage, as the self-imprint, I would kind of just be impressed by how well-rounded the stat line is for what this character's actual kit is, which we'll talk about now. Let's start with the S2 passive, Phantom's Waltz. Decreases the amount of resources gained by the enemy by 50%. Uh, very obviously targeted at Abyssal Euphine, Lone Cressa Bologna, Lionheart Sermia, and a number of other fighting spirit characters. At the start of battle and at the end of each turn has a 60 to 100% chance, depending on Malagora, to be granted stealth for one turn. So obviously this is a ranger that doesn't need guiding light. Skill 3 is Fanatic Ball. You acquire 3 souls upon use and it has a 4 to 5 turn cooldown, depending on Malagora. Hosts a ball, making all allies enraged for 2 turns. In case you forgot, enrage means 20% extra attack and speed and enrage cannot be dispelled. Dispels two buffs from all enemies and decreases their speed for two turns before also decreasing their combat readiness by 20%. Soulbird effect for the cost of 20 souls is the dreaded ignores effect resistance. Finally, the basic skill is Graceful Gesture. Attacks the enemy with phantoms, dispelling one buff from the target. When the caster is enraged, triggers a dual attack from the ally with the highest attack. Now that you know the kit, where to begin? Let's start with a meme, shall we? Smallgate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. In case you haven't guessed, they're the same picture. This character, to me, seems like the new version of Conquer Aloyas. Both characters have very similar bulk stats with health in the low 6,000s and defense in the low 600s. And both of them have a speed threshold of around 120. Obviously, Lilius is a bit faster at 121. Both of these characters give you a massive swing in power with their skill threes. They both remove buffs from the opponent's team, and they both apply an undispellable buff to your team, which grants you quite a bit of power, right? In the case of Lilius, you're going to get the Vigor buff, which causes less damage to your team thanks to the fact that it gives defense percentage and attack down to the enemy team. But with Politis, you get a speed up for your whole team and a speed down for the enemy team, which I'd argue is stronger because speed is just the best stat in the game, hands down. The buff strip, by the way, on Politis, it's also better because 
Well, it's two whole buffs. It gets around the immunity plus protection combo, which Crimson Armin plays quite a lot, and a lot of people have been using on various different things. Hell, it's gotten to the point where not only am I seeing protection and immunity on Crimson Armin, I've seen it on Benny Morrow, I've seen it on Auden, I've even seen it on Shadow Knight Pillis at this point. On top of that, she starts in stealth, so she doesn't have to worry about certain counter picks like Zeo. And the passive Phantom's Waltz, it also has a built-in resource reduction component. And that's pretty huge. So not only do you not have to worry about Zeo locking down your opener, but you don't really have to worry about Lionheart Sermia and her S3. You don't have to worry about potentially things like Abyssal Euphine or Navy Captain Landy coming and wrecking your day. And correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, but resource reduction also affects focus. So you don't have to worry as much about Ocean Breeze Lulica because, well, she shouldn't be able to run you over with the car on the very first turn. These are all issues that Lilius has that Polidus doesn't really seem to have. And it, you know, even in the case of the basic skill, Kneel Down is one of the best ones that we've ever had in Epic 7. It pretty much makes... Conquer Lilius, one of the best characters in any game mode. Hall of Trials, uh, PvE, PvP, you name it. It's really good. I'd argue, at least for the purposes of PvP, that Polidus has the better S1 because not only does it give you the pull on a random ally, but it dispels a buff. And that's kind of big because in case you haven't noticed, critical hit resistance is kind of in due to Navy Captain Landy. So yeah, that's pretty much it for just the analysis of the skill set, and I know it's shorter than usual, but it's pretty obvious, at least to me, what this character is. She's just the second Conqueror Elias. If you get Conqueror Elias, then your opponent is probably taking Polidus. If you get Polidus, they're probably taking Conqueror Elias. That said, given the choice, I think Polidus is better positioned with the current metagame that we have at the release of the character. Just think of all of the damage dealers that are strong in the format. Landy. Bologna, Euphine, even Urban Shadow Shoe, which is another focus unit. These are all things that are affected by resource reduction, which means that Paulidus is a better pick. You're essentially getting an overpowered opener that restricts all of the quality damage dealers in the format. And while your opponent could also have an OP opener, theirs has way more weaknesses than yours does. So in short, Paulidus, at least to me, is just Lilius's way more attractive sister. It's always possible that I'm wrong in these impressions videos, but to me, this one feels pretty cut and dry. I think you just pull this character if you're serious about PvP. I mean, she's pretty much good in every playstyle when you think about it, right? Cleave and aggro comps can use her to trigger characters like Genua. You could even use her for something like Teyu or Ambitious Tywin, because all of these characters have very powerful things that they can do if they actually have the enrage buff which she gives right she also doesn't need guiding light which means that she can use many other ranger artifacts that normally would never see the light of day spatio temporal fan which is lua's artifact that lets you set up situations where you can hide your carries and since she's unaffected by zeo you can essentially hide your carry like a gala lilius even if they try to silence it to basically let it see the light of day and successfully set up whatever you're trying to do. Could you imagine having Genoa available right away in stealth with Enrage from the get-go? That's pretty much lights out in certain scenarios. Other artifacts like Unseen Observer, well, that's just going to give you more souls for your ML Ludwig cleave, especially, you know, since you're going to probably use 20 souls on her Soulburn because it ignores effect resistance. That's going to push up your Ludwig, make sure that they don't have any protection set, any barriers, none of that can get in the way for your cleave. Even if you're a slow player like me, I still think you want the character, right? You can play her on Glow Wings 21, which is Command Model Lyca's artifact, and that's going to give you a massive barrier on turn one, and it's going to make it so much harder for your opponent to actually kill your team. She can also just use any of the stuff that's good naturally on Conqueror Lilius because they have almost the exact same stats. You could use things like Proof of Valor, on this character, you can use things like the Warhorn tech that I talked about and how to play Conqueror Lilius if you don't have speed. She's just really, really good, in my opinion. Just like with artifacts, 
as for equipment sets, almost anything that works on Conquer Lois can work on this character, right? So speed immunity probably is going to be the best thing. Over 300 speed if you could get it. Otherwise, do what I do with Conquer. 290 speed with as much bulk as you could get. Like maybe like uh, 1500 defense, 18 to 20k HP, somewhere in that range. Uh, that's probably what most people I feel like are going to go for. One of those two stat lines. Blazing fast or just, you know, really fast kind of tanky bruiser on speed set with immunity as the offset or hit as the offset. I just, I made the joke already, but she's just Conqueror Lois' sister. They basically share the same clothes when you think about it. You could literally just port all your gear over if you wanted to use her instead. But yeah, that's pretty much my analysis of the character. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think. Do you guys think that I'm right on the money here? That this is just Conqueror Lilius 2.0? Because that's honestly how I feel about it if it's not obvious from the video. But who knows? I've been wrong in the past. Maybe she's a total flop. I feel like that'd be kind of hard to do, though, when you have a resource reduction passive. Anyways, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week. I'll catch you in the next one. Later.